Krishna consciousness is the perfect stage, being freed of all contamination. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. After many, many births in execution of pious activities, when one is completely freed from all contaminations and from all illusory dualities, one then becomes engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Yes. <coughs> the exact verse in the Bhagavad Gita is Jesam Antagatam Papam. Jesam Antagatam Papam. Jesam Antagatam Papam. Jesam is Jesam Antagatam Papam. Papam means sin. One who has completely ended sin, sinful activities. Ah. Jananam Punna Karmanam. Persons who have simply executed pious activities. Such person becomes fixed up in Krishna consciousness without any dualities. Uh, because our mind is flickering, so dualities will always come, whether I shall accept it or not. Whether I shall become Krishna conscious or another conscious, these problems are always there. But if one is advanced by his pious activities, in the previous life, then he is fixed up, steady, I will become Krishna conscious. So this method, this chanting Hare Krishna method, even in your previous life, you did not uh, act in very piously or in this life. It doesn't matter. If you kindly take seriously this simple method, uh, Hare Krishna, chanting, uh, you become immediately pure. Uh, but with the determination uh, that you will not uh, contact any more impious activities. Just like in our society, we make four restrictions. Well, anyone who desires to be initiated in our society, we put uh, four principles. Uh, no illicit sex life. We don't say that don't have sex life. No illicit sex life. You get yourself married and for children you can have sex life, not for any other. So no illicit sex life, no intoxication. Our students, they do not smoke even. They do not take tea, even coffee. Uh, so, what to speak of other things? So, they are so pure. No gambling and no animal food. That's all. If you simply follow these four principles, then you become immediately uncontaminated. Immediately. Without any further endeavor. Uh, so, Krishna consciousness movement is so nice that as soon as you join, you become immediately uncontaminated. But do not contaminate again, therefore this restriction. Because our contamination begins from these four kinds of bad habits. But if we check, then there is no question of contamination. As soon as I take to Krishna consciousness, I become free. Now, if I become cautious not to accept these four principles, then I am free, I am continuing, uncontaminated. Oh. This is the process. But if you think that because Krishna consciousness makes me free, so uh, let me indulge in all these four principles and I will get free after chanting. Uh, that is cheating. Uh, that will not be allowed. Uh, once you are free, but don't do it again. But if you think, I shall do it and make myself free, uh, 
Just like in some religious process it is said that you commit all kind of sins and go to the church and simply uh, confess, you are free. So this doing and confessing, doing and confessing is going on. But here, no. If you have, you are freed, that's all that. But don't be such. That is the purpose of confession. Confession, if you confess that I have done these sinful activities, so why should you do again? If you confess that it is sinful, pickpocketing is sinful, take for example. So by confessing you are free, then why shall you do it again? It requires little intelligence. It does not mean that because by confessing I become free, I shall go on continuing this and again confess and become free. No, that's not good. If it is not good, you have confessed that it is not good, then you should not do it again. That is the purpose. Not that you do it and confess, do it and confess, do it and confess. This business is not good. So, we should be careful, the Krishna consciousness movement, that these four principles, if you indulge in, unrestricted, then you become contaminated. But if you take precaution in executing these four principles, uh, we don't say that you don't have sex life. You have, but for this purpose, not for this purpose. Uh, similarly, you eat, but you eat this way, not that way. Uh, so defend. Krishna also uh, uh, advised Arjuna to defend. So defend is also not prohibited. Provided it is for right cause. So in this way, uh, if we come to Krishna consciousness, immediately we become freed from all contamination, and if we take precaution of these four principles, then our life is pure. And if we can continue this pure life till the time of death, we are sure to be transformed to the uh, kingdom of God. Gone. That is stated in Bhagavad Gita, you have already read, Takta di hang punar janmanaiti. By uh, giving up this body, uh, that person who is fully in Krishna consciousness, he does not come back again to take part in this material world. This yogi who is coming to a good family, to a righteous family or a rich, aristocratic family, they are coming back. But if you are perfect Krishna consciousness, you are no more coming back. You situate, you are situated in the uh, Goloka Vrindavan in the spiritual sky. Uh, so we should try not to come back again. Because if I come back again, suppose I, I have got very nice chance. I have uh, got uh, birth in a very good family, in this family. But if I cannot utilize it properly, then again I go... Uh, uh, degrade myself to other uh, sort of life. So why should we take this risk? Uh, better complete Krishna consciousness in this life. It is very simple. Uh, it is not very difficult. Simply to keep yourself in thoughts of Krishna. That's all. Uh, it is very simple thing. Then you are assured of your next birth in the spiritual a sky in the kingdom of God or in the goal of Abhinava. Yes. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna.